win rates and are underrepresented in solo queue due to how difficult they are to play. However, if you put in the time and effort to get good at a champion that is really hard to play, you can often have a lot of success since these kinds of champions tend to not really get nerfed as harshly as some of the others, due to the fact that them being super hard to play holds them back just a tiny bit. And in fact, these champions on the list are all quite powerful if you put in the time to get good at them. As we count down the top 10 hardest champions to play in League of Legends, we'll be measuring them by how hard the champion is to get good at and play at a really high level. Anyways, let's get started. At number 10, we have Cassiopeia. With her micro mechanics of having to deal with her poison, as well as having to kite and position to be effective on her, since she's fairly immobile and can get bursted down quite easily, add into an ultimate that is fairly easy to outplay and thus extremely hard to hit properly, and this solid snake mid laner is left with a kit that requires a lot of mechanical skill and really smart play to set up her ultimate. She has a ton of outplay potential due to the movement speed bonus on her noxious blast, but making use of that effectively to dodge skill shots, kite, and micro her poison so that it doesn't run out all at the same time can be quite challenging for someone new to that style of champion. But when played at a super high level, she becomes incredibly strong since her kit is quite powerful and has a fair amount of tools, but getting to that level of play is extremely difficult. Next up at number 9, we have Bard. Now, Bard might not be the most mechanically difficult champion, but landing his ultimate and making good use of a magical journey is really, really tough, especially since one bad play, one bad ultimate can potentially go as far as to cost your team the entire game. His kit is quite unforgiving if you mess up, due to the fact that his skills can really help your enemies, and so you really have to have a good knowledge and awareness to make plays with his portals, and when you throw out his ultimate, you have 10 people to consider that you could potentially hit, rather than the normal 5 of a regular skill shot, and depending on who you hit, the outcome of a fight can change dramatically, and getting to the point where you can hit his ultimate effectively and reliably is incredibly difficult, and is one of the main reasons why Bard has a reasonably low win rate. At number 8, it's Twisted Fate. Now, Twisted Fate's mechanics as well aren't too crazy, as they are mostly limited to picking the right card in a high pressure situation, and aiming your wild cards to angle off and hit multiple targets. And so his mechanics only waver on the fairly above average range in terms of difficulty, and so what truly makes him really hard to play is the decision making required to perform well with him. Twisted Fate does not have a very high damage kit nor a lot of outplay potential, and so you need a lot of good awareness and understanding of the game as a whole in order to effectively make plays with him. If you mess up your teleport or go for a bad roam, you'll get punished really hard, since when Twisted Fate is behind, his damage is extremely non-impactful, and his impact on the game becomes that of a glorified support. But if you can manage to make really smart plays and have really good positioning in teamfights, as well as picking the right cards when you have people jumping in on you, Twisted Fate can be one of the best champions to carry games with, due to his global presence that he can pull off. Next up at number 7, we have Thresh. Now at first glance, Thresh doesn't seem too crazy, but to play him at a really high level actually takes a lot of mechanical skill, as his mechanics within his kit are actually quite hard to pull off. Landing his hook against a decent player is quite tough since the skill shot is really slow and so people tend to use mobility to dodge it fairly easily and so you have to get good at pulling off mad life hooks just to be able to land the ability most of the time. As well as positioning his lantern in a good spot for your teammates to be able to click on it is actually a lot harder than it seems when you're put into a high pressure situation. And let's not forget, the mechanic of using his flight to stop someone using a mobility spell such as Shivana's ultimate or Gragas body slam is not only extremely difficult since his flay is so fast, but it's also ridiculously important to succeeding with Thresh, since it drastically improves his kiting and outplayability, and without being able to do it, makes you significantly weaker. And he's not super tanky, so jumping in at a bad time with a hook or missing one completely can get punished quite hard as well. However, if you do manage to perform extremely well mechanically on Thresh, he becomes one of the strongest supports in the game and allows you to perform an insane amount of plays with his kit. 
At number six, we have Vayne. Now, she's a champion that's super hard to play because her kit is really unforgiving. If you mess up her kiting mechanics and get hit by even as much as just one powerful skill shot, that can very often mean instant death for her, since her stealth isn't too hard to beat with a pink ward or an upgraded sweeper lens. And so her auto attacking and kiting mechanics are incredibly difficult to pull off because you essentially have to dodge everything or you just get wrecked. Not to mention that landing her Condemn on a target to stun them is quite difficult and requires some really smart maneuvers. But if you can kite and dodge with her absolutely perfectly, she is quite the hyper carry and can really dominate teamfights. Next up at number 5 we have Riven. Riven makes the top half of the list due to the insane amount of mechanics that she requires to pull off effectively as well as the decision making required with her in teamfights. Knowing when to enter a fight is really tough, since she can get punished and locked down by crowd control so easily that if you enter a fight too early, you get punished super hard, and if you enter too late, you can really miss your opportunity to kill people. Not to mention, the mechanics involved around using her kit efficiently is extremely complex, and so using them to combo and maximize her damage effectively and efficiently is incredibly difficult, not to mention microing her auto attacks and dodging skill shots, and so you get left with an incredibly difficult mechanical champion. However, she's quite snowball-y and so if you can pick up some kills early, a skilled Riven player can completely steamroll an entire game with the tools that she does have on her kit. And at number 4, it's Draven. Although Draven might be the easiest champion on this list to play at an average level, when it comes to getting really good at him, learning to micromanage his axes is actually insanely difficult, since in order to maximize his DPS, you often need to effectively be able to juggle three axes in a chaotic, high-pressure situation in a teamfight. And holding onto his axes in teamfights while kiting and dodging your opponent's skill shots is really, really important to keeping his damage at the maximum potential, and overall is just really difficult to micromanage. In addition, similar to Thresh's Flay, you have to really get used to stopping mobility spells with his stand aside in order to effectively outplay and kite a lot of champions, which can be quite a difficult mechanic to perform as well. His strength in lane is quite high, so even if you don't have the best mechanics, you can still be fairly successful, but his team fighting is incredibly difficult and can be significantly weaker if your individual skill can't hold up to catching his axes. However, if you can pull it off, he has some of the highest raw DPS in the entire game and can really run away with a lead due to his raw power when you aren't dropping his axes. And at number 3 we have Azir. Mastering the Azir mechanics involving his mobility and kiting is extremely difficult since you have to micromanage his soldiers around your opponents while keeping them in range, and going for plays with his shifting sands is actually incredibly difficult since it's fairly easy to outplay, and if you jump into a fight by missing it, he dies really fast and gets punished really hard. In addition, due to the incredibly short range on Emperor's Divide, the skill is insanely hard to land, and making plays with it as well is crazy difficult, and is a big reason as to why his win rate overall is quite low, but is actually positive in the Master and Challenger tiers. The Shurima Shuffle play where you jump in behind someone and then ult them back is such a powerful play, but it's quite easy to outplay, and overall is incredibly difficult to pull off, and super easy to mess up but it's a really important part of being able to do well with his kit, especially when it comes to acquiring an early lead. As well as the decision making involved in his zone control is quite complex and requires a lot of game knowledge to be good at. But if you can manage to play him perfectly, he's one of the strongest mid laners in the entire game right now and has a ton of power that you can use to make plays. And at number 2, it's Yasuo. Yasuo is another champion who gets punished quite hard if you make a mistake. If you mess up with him on a wind wall or miss a tornado, his overall kit becomes a lot less powerful. The Yasuo mechanics of micromanaging your tornado, as well as his mobility and maximizing the use of his wind wall, is quite difficult, and both in lane and in teamfights he has a lot of trouble and is easily outplayed if you don't know what you're doing. 
His laning phase is quite weak if you don't understand how to outplay a lot of champions, and his skills require a lot of setup and preparation to pull off successfully, which is quite difficult to manage as a whole. In addition, setting up a good ultimate in teamfights is ridiculously hard if you don't have other knockups in your team composition, and so charging up a knockup can be almost impossible in a teamfight since he gets completely shut down when he gets hit by just one crowd control spell. And in the high pressure, chaotic situation of a teamfight, wind wall effectively and getting off a good ultimate is extremely difficult, but also really necessary for him to be powerful. So if you can make use of his kit effectively, he becomes super strong and has a ton of outplay potential through kiting his opponents and setting up his skills effectively. And taking home my number one spot, it's Lee Sin. Honestly, any of the top three champions probably could have taken the number one spot, so it was kind of a toss-up, but I chose to put Lee Sin mainly because of him being fairly weak right now, which actually in my opinion makes him somewhat harder to pull off the really powerful plays with him compared to the other champions. Landing the Sonic Wave certainly is not easy on him, and setting up ganks with him requires a lot of creativity, since he actually does not have that much crowd control in his kit until he hits level 6 and even then it can still be hard to pull off. In addition, the insect play of jumping behind someone and ulting them back is actually extremely difficult to pull off, mainly because of how easy it is to outplay the Lee Sin with a flash or mobility spell to not only deny the play entirely, but to have him kick the target away, which would actually help them in a teamfight. In addition, teamfighting with Lee Sin overall is just super hard, since it's really hard for him to find a role in what to do if your insect play fails, since he isn't going to deal enough damage unless he's snowballing. Managing his passive is also fairly difficult, and since he essentially has 6 abilities, maximizing the use out of all of them is not only super difficult, but really important in order to manage his energy effectively and get the most power out of his kit. Lee Sin was once reasonably easier to play, but now that he isn't that strong, succeeding with him is extremely difficult, and the mechanical skill required for him, as well as the game knowledge and creativity needed to get results out of him, is quite insane, and it's a big factor in his super low win rate. And so Lee Sin takes my